In this video, we will take a look at how we can create this swaying motion using shaders in Godot. This is the scene we have. It's some cables are made in Blender. It also has some vertex color on it. If you take a look. And let's do unshaded. The model is black at the top and then it's a linear gradient to white to the bottom. So let's bring that back. Let's expand this. And the shader code will have a uniform for the color and we're applying that and some roughness. So let's make some uniforms. I want two uniforms, one to control the speed and one for the intensity. So I'm going to do uniform, flow, speed, and let's set it to one as a default value. And then do uniform, flow, intensity, and let's set it to 0.3 as a default value. And we will also be working with our vertex color and I want to make some changes in the vertex shader and then I might want to display it in the fragment shader. So I will do a varying. It's going to be a flow. We can call it height mask. Now in the vertex shader, let's first set our primary sway direction. Let's say that we want it to sway in the X axis and it's going to be a vector three and let's call it sway direction and vector 3 and 1 in the x direction, 0 in y and 0 in c. And then let's also make a time variable. So float time and it's going to be equals to time multiplied by our speed. And then we're going to create a new float and let's call it sway amount and it's going to be equal to let's do a sign for now and let's pass time to this and let's also multiply with our intensity so now let's create some animation let's get some movement in this so we're going to do vertex we're just going to add to the vertex so we're going to plus equal and we're going to take our sway amount and we need to multiply with our sway direction so now we should see so right now it's moving the whole object but we want to multiply by our height mask or our vertex color. So I'm going to take height mask and let's set it to color.r. So that's just the red channel of the vertex color. And in our albedo, we can display this. So height mask. If we go to unshaded, it's black at the top and white at the bottom. In our vertex, next to our sway mount and sway direction. Let's multiply by our height mask. And now we're seeing that the object is moving. So now we're having this kind of sway motion and it's not moving at top. So we're using this linear gradient. But let's say we want to change the gradient a bit so we get a feeling of there's some more weight to it. And as a quick way to do this is that we can take our height mask and let's just multiply it by itself. So now you can see that the gradient has changed a bit. This was our regular linear gradient. And then we multiply it by itself. We get this kind of effect. But right now, our animation, it's just moving back and forth with a sine wave. But it's, it's very obvious that it's repeating. There's no dynamic to the motion, it's always the same. So instead of having one sine wave, we could combine multiple sine waves to create something a bit more interesting. So this is our sine wave. It's, it's just our regular sine wave going up and down. What we can do, we can create multiple sine waves and we could give them slightly different values to it. So if we multiply it, by something else. So here we have another sine wave and this sine wave has a different value. So right now it's 1.22 but we can give it whatever number we want here to create something interesting. And then we can have a third one as well with a, another value. So now we're having three different sine waves and what we can do, we can add those sine waves together. So now we added all those three sine waves together to create this more interesting looking sine wave. 
So just by combining different sine waves with different values, we can create some more interesting animations. So let's create a function that combines different sine waves. So in our shader code, let's make a new function. It's going to return a float. So we're going to do float. And I'm going to call it sine 3 combine. So we're combining three sine waves. And it's going to take two parameters. The first one is going to be a time parameter. And the second one is going to be what we're multiplying the sine waves with. Since we're having three different sine waves, I want to do a vector 3. And I will call it frequencies. Now we need a variable to hold our values. So I'm going to do a float a sum and let's set it to zero. And now we're going to do sum plus equal. We're going to add to sum. We're going to do sine and we're going to take our time parameter and we're going to multiply that with the frequencies. So frequencies dot x since we want the first value. And now we can just copy this whole line and paste it two times. And then we change in the second line, we change frequencies x to dot y. And then in the third line, let's change it to dot c. So now we're going to return our sum value. But I want to divide it by 3. So we're still having this minus 1 to 1 range. So I will do a return sum. I'm going to do a multiply by 0 0.333. Now in our vertex, in our sway amount, we can replace this sine time with our sine 3 combine. And we're going to do our time. Let's also split this between multiple lines. So time, we're going to do our frequencies, which are going to be a vector 3. And let's give it three different values. So the first one can be 1.0. The second one can be 1.22 and 1.41. Let's also remove this. So now our animation will have a, a bit more variation to it compared to just having one sine wave. So let's take our cable here. Let's duplicate it. So we have multiples. So one issue right now is if we have multiple cables hanging in the world, they're all going to move at the same time. And that might not be what we want. So we're going to create an offset to the animation. And to do that, we can use the world position. So in our shader code, we're going to create a new function. We're going to do, it's also going to return a float. So float, and we're going to call get position sum. And the parameter is going to be a vector 3. And we're going to take the world position. And all we're going to do is we're going to add all of the world position axis together. So x, y, z. So we're going to do return world position dot x. And then we're going to add world position dot y. And then world position dot z. And now in our vertex shader, we can create a new variable to hold our position value. So float position sum. And it's going to be equal to our function we just created so get position sum and here we can do the node position world and this will just use mesh position and it's a vector 3 so now we can do an offset value so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do float and we can call this sway offset and it's gonna be equal to this position sum and then we're gonna multiply it by a value so let's set it to zero right now and in our sway amount, our time variable, we can add our offset to that. So sway offset. So now they're moving here. But if we increase our sway offset, our multiply here, as we increase this value, they're going to offset their animation. So now... They will not be moving at the same time. So we could just give it a large number here. So let's say 25.5. So now they're all, way, all moving a bit differently. Or with a different offset to the animation.
But we can also create a bit more variation. So right now they're only offsetting the animation. But we can also multiply or give some variation in the speed as well. And to do that, we can just adjust our time variable. So we're going to do time. We're going to do multiply equal. And here we can also use the position sum. But I want to do fract so I since I want a value between 0 and 1 and do position sum. So now we're going to see that they have different animation speed to them based on the world position. But one issue right now is some of them might be multiplied by 0 and I still want some animation to it but just a slight variation to the speed. So what I'm going to do in our fract here, we're going to do a max. And as the second value, I'm going to do 0 0.8. And, that's, and this just means that our lowest number here can be 0 0.8. If this fract position sum will be lower than 0 0.8, it will just return 0 0.8. So now they will only be a slight variation to the speed. So if we look in the other axis, we're only having animation in one axis right now. But maybe we want some kind of a secondary direction for our animation. So let's do that next. So below our sway direction, I'm going to do another vector 3. I'm going to call this cross direction. And in this case, I want it to be in the C axis. So we could just write another vector 3 and do the C axis. But we can also use the cross product if we ever would change this sway direction. And we want to do a normalize. And then our cross product, so cross. And we're going to give it our sway direction. And we're going to give it the up direction as well. So it's just going to be a vector 3, 0 on the x. 1 in the y and 0 in the c. So let's create a float. Uh, we can call this way cross amount. So this will also use our sine 3 combine function. And we can do the same time plus way offset. You could make another offset for this as well if you want a different kind of offset to the, for this cross motion compared to our primary. And we're going to give it another frequencies. This time I will give it different values compared to the first one. So we have a different kind of sine wave. So I'm going to do vector 3. And let's give it 1.114, maybe 1.32, and 1.64. And let's also multiply this with our intensity. So now in our vertex, we can create a new so vertex. We're going to add it to that and we, and we can take our sway cross amount. So we need our cross direction. And then we also need to multiply by our height mask. So if we now take a look and we hide all of the other ones, you can see we're now having animation in two axes. And they are all have different motion to it based on the world position. If we move this around, you're going to see it's changing. And you can always play around with this, with this value. Maybe you want not to sway as much in one axis compared to, to the other one. So this is how you use tweak some values. So this is a way to create some very simple swaying motion using shaders.